Hello, my name is Dr. Tom Bennett. Today I'm, I'm from Kane University in uh, New Jersey. Today we're aboard the Battleship New Jersey and we're interviewing Mr. Donald Barrier, who is pharmacist, class second mate, and who is a plank owner of the Battleship New Jersey because he served aboard it from when it was first um, commissioned in 1943 until October 1945 when he was discharged. Uh, Mr. Barrier uh, was from North Carolina and he presently lives in North Carolina. Mr. Barrier, thank you very much for talking with us today. My pleasure. Um, let's start off the conversation um, just by asking you, how did you come to be involved with the Battleship New Jersey from being a young man in North Carolina until you got aboard the ship? Could you talk about that, please? I'd always loved the Navy. I wanted to be in the mm -hmm. Navy. But I was married and had one son. I was working and when the war broke out, I went just as long as I could. And there was a lot of my buddies here conscripting the men. I just went ahead and volunteered mm -hmm. and went, went on down there. See, they give you a week off. I told them I'd take immediate service. Maybe right on, I didn't even go back home. Mm -hmm. So I went to Bainbridge, Maryland. That's where we took the boot training. Then went from there to Annapolis, Maryland, got mm -hmm. my medical training there. Mm -hmm. And then when, when I've been there about two or three months, the chief farmer's mate come over there and come. said, Barry, how would you like sea beauty? Well, that's what I wanted all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I know if I said I would love it. He said, what on? He said, the battleship New Jersey. I remember it well. I said, I'll be ready in two hours. Mm -hmm. But he said, no, we want to be that quick. He said, mm -hmm. oh, 700 in the morning, be ready. So you knew the, ba the battleship New Jersey was a new ship uh, being constructed right. at that point. It hadn't gone into the, it hadn't been uh, commissioned yet. Well, it had been commissioned, mm -hmm. already, but it hadn't completely finished mm -hmm. its shakedown mm -hmm. cruise. Mm -hmm. And if they'd given my offer of anything there, I, that's what I would have took, New mm -hmm. Jersey. Let me ask a question. What was the reaction of your family when you said, I'm joining the Navy? Obviously, wartime, dangerous conditions. Uh, what was your reaction to your family, your friends, and so, and so on? Well, they were worried, and some of them said, you're crazy to volunteer, why don't you wait? I was afraid I wouldn't get in on the fun. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get a hold of the Japs. Mm -hmm. And it worked out good. Mm -hmm. Got to see quite a few, well, a lot of action. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about now, you're going from pharmacist school to the battleship in New Jersey. What's your experiences as you get to the ship? What did you see that first day when you're approaching the ship and coming aboard the ship? The first day I come in, come up on the, on the starboard side of the place you sit. I'll never forget my feelings. Like, Lord, God Almighty, what are you doing here, fella? Mm -hmm. I saw those big guns. Mm -hmm. But after I got aboard, they couldn't have run me off then. I fell in love with them then. Mm -hmm. And it, it sounds crazy, but before the war was over, if they'd offered me a discharge, I would have refused it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be there until it was over. Mm -hmm. So you reported aboard, and then you were, tell me about your assigned to the, phar the pharmacist uh, area. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yes, sir, I was assigned to that. First thing was in the sick bay. Mm -hmm. Well, and during that period, I served in all of them in the sick bay, over the sick bay, and giving medications. Worked in the, what we call it, the dressing room, but mm -hmm. the national emergency room if anyone mm -hmm. was injured. And also worked in the operating room, mm -hmm. helping on the operations. Mm -hmm. Then the last I did was in the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. I loved that. Talk, to, what, what was your training like as a pharmacist mate? How many weeks was it, and what was what, some of the things involved in your training? The school, I think, was nine weeks. You had to go through the, the book training. Mm -hmm learn all of those uh, big words mm -hmm. on what to do and learn the medicines and what to require and also keep a strict rule on how to give it. Be sure not give mm -hmm. the wrong medicine mm -hmm. and all that. And then we got the actual experience. Mm -hmm. When I went to Annapolis, Maryland, I always put over a ward there and mm -hmm. we had to, well, had to act just like the doctor said to do. Mm -hmm. Give the medications, whatever it mm -hmm. us to do, we had to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got Thing where we could do most anything that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. The time we went into action. Mm -hmm. What were some of the? I was a pharmacist mate. What were some of the, the sicknesses and any battle casualties that you took care of? Let's cover general sicknesses aboard ship. Well, one of the worst things we had was out there where it's so hot, jock itching your mm -hmm. feet. Some mm -hmm. of my feet just tried to rot off. Mm -hmm. That was one of the worst things. Then they had what they call cat fever. Cat fever. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was uh, from shore duty, coming, going ashore or so. Uh. Well, no, mostly it was a 
catarrhal fever, like the flu, mm -hmm. but it shortened down to cat mm -hmm. fever. Mm -hmm. Then we did have quite a few of those cat fever we got caught on shore too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so How did you treat the cat fever? We had, back then, the only medicines we had was uh, sulfur drugs. Mm -hmm. We used them on about everything but the little penicillin come mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Then they switched over on did that. Did sulfur work or no? It worked good. It worked good, yeah. Talk, what about, now you mentioned also the, the problem with the men's feet because it was so hot and humid aboard ship. Um, talk a little bit about what you saw on the feet and how you treated those. Well, you see some of them rot. We had different medicines to put on, but where they're real bad, they give them the, I forget what you call it, bad. Is that a blue medicine? I can't even remember what it was now. I had to soak her feet in for a mm -hmm. long period of time. Mm -hmm. And did many, many men suffer from that? Well, as a, considering the amount of men that was on there, I'd say it's a very minimum. A just, minimum. Just minimum. a few of them had mm -hmm. that. They had strict rules there. You had to stay good and clean. Mm -hmm. Your bathrooms, you had to keep them clean. Mm -hmm. So we actually didn't have too much sickness mm -hmm. along that line. Mm -hmm. The only fatality we had, I think, is before we went, went through the canal. This one guy, his name was Michael, I think, lived somewhere in this area. He wanted to go home and see his wife. He had pneumonia on mm -hmm. the ship. Hmm. But he talked to the doctor and let him go. And as on for the weekend, when he come back in, the pneumonia was so bad, they just couldn't do nothing with it. And he died from pneumonia? He died from pneumonia. And when was that? Before you went to the Pacific in 43? That was right. Bef in 1943? Yeah, before we went into the Pacific. Mm -hmm. Now, once you're in the Pacific, uh, did you deal with any combat wounds? Um, the ship was considered a lucky ship. It wasn't hit by my enemy, enemy shells, but did you service any uh, Marines or Navy, Army personnel ashore? No, the only casualties we had, is one case there where we just pulled into Ulithi, that was our home base. Ulithi, mm-hmm. And uh, one of the destroyers was across the island doing doctor practice, was five inch 38s. Mm -hmm. And one of them didn't go off, and it come over, it's right in the afternoon, and the guys down together just finished cleaning up, and one of the boys was laying down sleeping. They went through down there and hit that third deck and it was armored. Mm -hmm. And the fuse exploded. Mm -hmm. And right below the knee, it took bone and all mm -hmm. completely out of that leg. So this is World War II. It, it blew off a man's leg below the knee. That's right. The round didn't explode, but just the fuse Just the fuse. The round yeah. went off. It had been a different story. A different entirely. story. And that was, just to review that again, because I've read about this. Um, a destroyer. Do you remember the name of the destroyer by any chance? No, sir. I don't okay. remember. And it fired a five inch round and it was firing it over the New Jersey, and the round landed short. Why, why did it land short? Did you ever find out? It was a dud. Ah, mm -hmm. A short round, in other words, they call those. Short, short round. Uh, sure. It was firing up. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to went off in mm -hmm. the planes, mm -hmm. but it didn't. Okay. So it come quite a bit farther over than it was supposed to I come. See. Was there combat going on at the time, or was it just the practice round? This was a practice, practice round. Practice round. Oh, so. So did you, were you involved in treating that man who lost his leg? Yes, sir, I helped. You did? Could him. you talk about that a little bit? Well, we picked him up there and he, what he said, no, he'd sleep. Mm -hmm. He said the noise woke him up. Mm -hmm. He said, you know what it was? So I jumped up and started to run and I fell. He said, I thought I stepped in a hole, so I got up and started to run again and fell. So I knew there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. Then he saw that he didn't have but one leg to stand on there. <coughs> so that's when we went up and got him and he, his name was Clower. He's from Georgia. What was his name? Clower. Clower. C L O W E R. C L O W E R. Like kind of like a clown. Mm -hmm. And he smoked cigars all the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And even when we got him, take him down to sick bay, he still had that cigar mm -hmm. in his mouth. Mm -hmm. But we did the best we could for him and got him treated up, and then we sent him off to the shore base mm -hmm. hospital. Mm -hmm. And three months after that, we got a picture from him. And he was in the hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. They'd saved that leg. They saved his they leg. They saved his they leg. They didn't have to amputate it anymore. That's right. They mm -hmm. saved it. And so mm -hmm. he was sitting in a wheelchair and a good-looking nurse uh -huh. pushing him around. Uh -huh. So he, in effect, they saved the leg uh, above the knee? I saved it all. Oh, the whole leg? Yeah. Oh, so in other words, they were able to uh, sew it together or yeah. somehow repair it? So he just took the whole bone out right below the knee. I see. Meat with it, but they, 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 they saved, saved the it. leg. That's very, I didn't know that. I never heard that before. And so he's probably lived a... Um, a happy life after that, as far as you could tell. As far as I know, uh, 
Yeah. I hope he's still living. And what did you specifically do to stop the bleeding and to save the man from dying of trauma and blood loss? Well, the first thing you do is train him was to put a tourniquet on mm -hmm. take care of the, the blood mm -hmm. loss. And then we give him a quarter shot of morphine for mm -hmm. shock. Mm -hmm. Those two took care of him to get him to the, mm -hmm. down to the doctor mm -hmm. and let him do the treatment. Mm -hmm. We had a kit we carried all the time. We had to keep a few syrettes, quarter inch morphine mm -hmm. already mixed up. And so on a bad wound, that's the first thing. You just to do. stick with a morphine needle very, with a little syrette with a needle on it? Is that what you do? That's right. Already mm -hmm. prepared. All you had to do was just mm -hmm. inject it. And it, I guess it saved quite a few lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any, did you treat any other wounds aboard the ship? Yes, sir, we had others. We had one guy, we sent the wheel boats out. Well, they had to do that every once in a while when mm -hmm. the planes were coming in, in case mm -hmm. one went overboard. And he got caught between the ship and the, and the boat, mm -hmm. his foot, and the whole side of the foot, he just peeled the skin off. So uh, one of the whale boat, one of the whale boat men that had his foot caught between the whale boat and the the battleship, That's and right. it ripped his skin off. Mm -hmm. And just took one whole side of his foot off, mm -hmm. meat, skin, and mm -hmm. all. We treated that for didn't have any way of taking him out to shore at that time, but we treated him for I guess a couple of three weeks, and he got along all right. Mm -hmm. He got better. He got better, yes Good. sir. Good. Uh, did you pick up any um, any Marines uh, who were engaged in combat on land? Marines or Army troops at all? No, we didn't pick yeah. up any of those. Mm -hmm. We were used to far, too things, far off. Far off sure. Any pilots? Down pilots? American? Japanese? Got one Japanese. You picked up Jap. Uh, could you talk about the Japanese you picked up? They brought him in. He was we shot the plane down, and he's kind of a heavy set guy. Mm -hmm. But he had every every finger on his hand was broken. Bad shape. Mm -hmm. So I remember they splinted him up, put splints on him, and they kept him over in what they call the isolation ward. Isolation ward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because didn't want to mix them right then. You never know what might happen. Mm -hmm. But he got along all right. Mm -hmm. They finally took him off somewhere. I don't mm -hmm. know where they were mm -hmm. taking him to. Mm -hmm. And what do you recall? What time of the war that was when you picked up that Japanese pilot? Or no. off what during what battle or? Well, I think it's in the. Wasn't well, late his battle. Midway somewhere anyway, the chap mm -hmm. sent in a big carrier force on us. Mm -hmm. Caught us by surprise there. Mm -hmm. I know it's long about two thirty or three o'clock one afternoon when the general alarm went off. And the guy on the PA system made the count off. Said, "Everybody, man, your battle station. See, we have another lot of bogies mm -hmm, coming in. Mm -hmm. 185 planes. You know mm -hmm. what that was." And then he got over excited and said, "There's so many we can't even count them. Said, on the double." Mm -hmm. Well, about I'd say up to 10 minutes. He, he was worse than a thunderstorm ever mm -hmm. done in that mm -hmm. whole convoy. I guess was going mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. It lasted about 15 or 20 minutes, and we shot down. I don't know how many planes between them. Our gun fire and our planes, mm -hmm. I think it destroyed. It was 400 plane force that come in. Mm -hmm. I think it's about 50 years old that got back out. Really? Really destroyed. Was that Marianas maybe? Might have been in the Marianas. Turkey side. shoot? It could have been that. Yeah, one. might have been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you picked up one Japanese um, pilot. Any other Japanese that you I, ever I recall picking up? Picked up one little fellow. Mm -hmm. He was a soldier, I guess. He just weighed about 85 pounds. Mm -hmm. It didn't look like he's over 12, mm -hmm. 14 years old, but I guess he's mm -hmm. older. Mm -hmm. And he never wanted to feed him. We served cabbage or did. He mm -hmm. wouldn't touch him. Mm -hmm. He would not eat cabbage. Mm -hmm. He's that peculiar. And then while we had him on there, a couple of three days, he took appendicitis. So they up, we operated on him there. And most of the time, though, we keep him in bed for three or four days. But the doctor said, I've been reading something on this, said, get him up next morning and let him walk a little. We did that a couple of days, and he didn't even know he'd been operated on. He got along extra hmm. well. Hmm. After that, mm -hmm. any operation we did, the same with us. Interesting. I got him up early. How did you feel um, working on a Japanese captured Japanese prisoner? What was your reaction? Well, I didn't feel too bad about that. We've got you. Mm -hmm. We are it. So mm -hmm. I really didn't hold anything against him then. Mm -hmm. As the ones that were fighting back mm -hmm. that I didn't like. But after we got him under our control, uh, he's just an ordinary person. Yeah. 
Anything else you could tell us about your experiences as a pharmacist mate that you think is interesting or important for us to know? Well, I had the, about every job that was there. Mm -hmm. I served in the, in the ward where I had to take care of everything there and see if medication was given. Mm -hmm. Then I had to give medications for a long, long time. Then I also worked in the dressing room, which would be called the emergency room, I guess, mm -hmm. here in civilian life. Mm -hmm. Treat wounds that come in. And then the, I was in the operating room for quite a while, helped mm -hmm. them on operations. And the last work I did there was in the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that. Why'd you like the pharmacy? Well, it's just it's a good, quiet place to work. Mm -hmm. and it's very intriguing to learn how the medicine was made and what mm -hmm. it was used for. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And I had a partner from Durham, North Carolina. His name was Jimmy Cameron. Mm -hmm. we Jimmy worked Cameron? And Jimmy Cameron. Mm -hmm. We worked together. And, uh, well, we went board ship together and we stayed together it was over with. Mm -hmm. We were the best of buddies. Still friends with him today? He didn't make it this long. Oh, he passed on. Mm -hmm. He, oh, about six or eight years ago, mm -hmm. he died of cancer. Uh-huh, I see. Talk to me a little bit about the crew the crew's attitude and your attitude towards the Japanese during the war. What were your feelings uh, as a young man aboard ship and the rest of the men's feelings aboard ship? Well, you might class it a dog fight. You know, mm -hmm. two dogs getting a fire bomb mm -hmm. get in. That's what we wanted. We had to get in on that. Mm -hmm. We had no feeling about killing a chap at all mm -hmm. as long as they were fighting us. It's like Admiral Hiles has said, kill, kill, and kill. And that's what we wanted to do. And that was which admiral? Halsey. A admiral Halsey. Admiral William Halsey. Bull Halsey said, kill, kill, kill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He hated him. Mm -hmm. I know he wasn't like most admirals, mm -hmm. or what you might call, not associated with the hands. Mm -hmm. He walked around the deck all the time. Some of us, when he was off duty, would be up there laying sunny. Mm -hmm. Well, naturally, we'd jump to our feet. Mm -hmm. At ease, boys. At ease. Mm -hmm. He didn't want us to jump to our feet. Mm -hmm. he come by. Did the men like Halsey? Loved him. Yeah, why? Why'd they love Halsey? Well, he did everything in the world for the man. Mm -hmm. Everything could be done. And he's doing just what we wanted to do. He was taking us where the action was. Where the fight was, sure. Right. Right. sure. Um, was he considered a tough commander to work for? Easy? Good fighter? He was a heck of a fighter, mm -hmm. but he's a good man to be under. Mm -hmm. He treated men good. Didn't impose upon anybody. Or mm -hmm. Feel like you were just trash. We were all men as far mm -hmm. as he's concerned. Mm -hmm. You also served under Admiral Spruance, who was fleet commander aboard the ship for a while. Talk to me a little bit about Spruance. What do you recall? Uh, he was the quiet type. You hardly ever saw him. Mm -hmm. he's, once in a while you might see him as he's coming and going. Mm -hmm. That's about all I knew about him. Mm -hmm. But he had the name of being a real good officer. Mm -hmm. A great leader. In fact, I think he's one of them in the Battle of Midway that kind of turned the tide of the battle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, board ship. If we can look at the rest of the crewmen, had have, what was your experiences? Uh, was this the first time you're away from home? I assume. What was your experiences dealing with these men from all around the United States? What was that like? Well, it's kind of interesting. It's more like just getting out here and walking through the town mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. You're. See a lot of people who will be friends, you speak mm -hmm. to them and all. Mm -hmm. and, well, that's the way we felt about them. They was all mm -hmm. buddies, in other words. Mm -hmm. Did people get along well on the ship because you're in tight quarters for a long period of time and si at sea in a hot climate? We were re really lucky in that deal, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like I said, the athlete's foot, something like mm -hmm. that was the biggest problem mm -hmm. we had there. Mm -hmm. But we kept that under control. Mm -hmm. Now, also board ship, you had a, a complement of African Americans, and one thing I'm investigating is how the ship's crew changes over time. When I look at pictures of the ship's crew in World War II, it's largely it was all white, except for the African American stewards, with some Filipinos also. Yeah, we had and then, yeah, and then as you move through the 50s and 60s, 70s, 80s, by the 80s, there's a fully integrated ship's crew. Um, talk to me a little bit about the the, the experiences uh, of your experience with the African Americans and Filipinos aboard, because they were like say in the stewards area and their job was to handle take care of the officers make their beds and serve them food mm -hmm. uh, did you have any experiences with these people just about the same as would with any of the other crew to me and to most all the others there was no color or no mm -hmm. creed or nothing they just one of the crews mm -hmm. big family mm -hmm. in fact that was better than i believe it was 
his land. Why do you say that? Well, we've never had any problems at all mm -hmm. with any of them. Mm -hmm. But right now, you know, we're having problems sure, all sure, along. Sure, sure, sure. Did you ever treat any African Americans or Filipinos in the sick bay? Oh, yes, they come down to treat the treatment same as any of the rest mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. They got treated just mm -hmm. the same way the rest of them. So there's no favoritism as far as treating a white person over Filipino or an African American person? None whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, when did you talk to me about any other experiences that are important concerning World War II, any of the combat, uh, as, as the war starting to wind down in 45, as you get ready to leave the ship, is there anything else that's important to talk about? Well, there's one thing that was right interesting, and it made the landing the Marines down in New Guinea, mm -hmm. we had to go along with our them. I got down there and run into a, a nest of Japanese subs. Mm -hmm. And one evening, all night, you know, they was dropping those ash cans and it sounded like somebody was banging the side of the mm -hmm. ship with a sledgehammer. You could see fire and water both going up mm -hmm. into the air together. It looked right strange. But we got through and got a landing made. Mm -hmm. Didn't lose any ships. Didn't lose any ships, yeah. How long did that depth charging take? How many hours? It must have went one evening all about all night. All night? All yeah. through the evening until sunrise? Yeah, the biggest part of the night. Really? Anyhow. Really? How did you feel now as the war is coming to the end? Um, the battleship New Jersey is the most decorated ship in the American Navy, uh, and it was well decorated in World War II. Um, did, your, did the crew expect to go to Tokyo Harbor for the peace signing? We all looked forward hoping we'd get to do that. Mm -hmm. But just as long as it was signed, that we knew we were coming home, and mm -hmm. that was the most important thing. What was your reaction when you heard the war's over? Well, to me, I, not much, but some of the guys, they just went crazy, mm -hmm. jumping up and down and hollering and shouting. But it's, I was a little older than some of them. Mm -hmm. That time I was about 25. So you enlisted about what age? I was 20, 22. 22. Mm -hmm. You were 25 when you got out then. So you're an old man compared <laughs> right, to some of the 17, 18 year olds. I was. That's for sure. Uh, so you had, and then when did, how did you get discharged? How did you leave the ship? It was on account of points. Mm -hmm. And when you got so many points, you're, you got discharged mm -hmm. if you want to take it. And that's how I got out. Mm -hmm. So were you ready to leave or did you want to stay? What was your feeling? Well, there's, there's two things there. They froze the rates. Mm -hmm. I couldn't make second class or I thought I should have been first class. Mm -hmm. That kind of teed me off a little bit. Why did they freeze the race? Because they, they knew they were going to cut down on the number in the military or so? Is that getting too many uh, other non-coms in there. I more, see. More than good. Wow. Mm -hmm. So uh, they froze that for a period of time. Then time it's over with. I was getting a little homesick, I guess. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, let's go on home. Mm -hmm. So you're discharged from the ship. Where were, dis where were you discharged from the ship? In which harbor? Tokyo. It was uh, Yokohama. Yokohama. Yeah. Good. And then from Yokohama, how did you get home, and what was your experiences going home? They put us on one of them. They called them Kaiser's Coffins, you know, those Liberty mm -hmm, ships. Mm -hmm. General Sturgis, I remember that. Mm -hmm. And we got out there, and we hit a pretty bad storm. But we weathered that one. And then along in the afternoon, we either got back in or hit another, and I don't know what, but I mean, it was really rough. Mm -hmm. We went out for chow. And there's about a hundred of us lined up on the starboard side. Mm -hmm. That wave hit that one side and we all went right over. Hmm. And been with that railing there, we'd all went It'd over. It'd be all over the side. All went on <laughs> that side. Uh -huh. So we finally got in the chow hall, sitting down at the tables, and they just, plates are going from one end to the mm -hmm. other. So <laughs> you're all wet, much. you're all wet. Yeah. You're sitting down <laughs> eating your, your, your chow, was that lunch or something? Or? That was. A meal at night. Night meal, dinner. Yeah, dinner. And where were you in the Pacific or Atlantic when that happened? In the Pacific. So yeah. We was heading back to, back to Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, along about ten o'clock, my buddy and I we went down to bed, mm -hmm. and it got really rough. And a big wave come over. and they had a sixteen foot hatch. It's covered with timbers mm -hmm. and then a tarp. Well, it took everything off, and there's tons and tons of water coming right down in wow. there. That's where we were sleeping. I never forget my buddy jumped up. He said, Barrier, let's get out of here. Said, this thing's going to sink. I'd just been topside and saw what it was, and I knew there was no chance there, and I just said, The hell with it. Mm -hmm. Lay back down. You just laid back down with I, I knew I was going yeah. one way or the other. Mm -hmm. so. 
So you matter. thought you met your end at that point? Right? I, I figured out. I, was. I uh -huh. figured out to go home. Okay, but you got through the storm and you got back home. How did it feel to be back in your hometown and to see your family again? Oh, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Really great. See your family and old friends. Made you feel like it's worth it all. Mm -hmm. What stands out in your mind about that? Well, when we come home, it's kind of odd. We come into the fourth time in Virginia where we were discharged. Mm -hmm. and there was five of us guys going down to Salisbury, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And there was no way of getting down there until the next day, and that was on the evening. So we wanted to get home. So there's five of us. Let's just get us a cab mm -hmm. and go down there. So we flagged one down. There's a woman driving. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, take it, but I'll have to find my husband. we will do the driving. Mm -hmm. She's gone throughout town on two wheels and screaming tires and had me scared to death again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she finally found her husband. Mm -hmm. We all come down there. And that was about 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still had a long way before I could get away home. Mm -hmm. So I asked the girl at the bus station if there's any way of going out there. He said, just wait a minute. He said, there's a mailman going up that way. Maybe I can get you a ride mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. So she called and he said, yeah. So he had a pickup truck and his enclosed in the back, mm -hmm. wires of a side. Mm -hmm. He let me crawl in on that mail. Mm -hmm. Took me on into Morganton, really? my hometown. Drawing with Morgan. Yeah, Morganton. Morganton. Yes, sir. North Carolina. And how that, long was the trip from uh, Salisbury to Morganton? Oh, that was only about two hours. Two hours, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, you, so what was the reception when you got back home? Well, it was night when I got in there. So I got a cab and went to my sister. She lived just a little ways out of mm -hmm. town. I knocked on the door. I had to get him out of the bed. <clears throat> I finally got my brother-in-law out there. Like so who it was. Well, I'll be down. <laughs> then my sister, she come running out, hugging me, of course. And said so the next day I went on home. Hmm. Had a joyful homecoming. Hmm. <clears throat> what was, uh, how did it feel to be home again? Feel you know, it's great. Mm -hmm. Really great. I didn't do anything but just enjoy life for mm -hmm. a while. Mm -hmm. Then I went back to work. And what did you do at work? What was your work? Uh, machine operator and furniture factory. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You've heard of Henry Dunn Furniture, haven't you? What is it? Henry Dunn. Henry Dunn? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I put in about 29 and a half years wow. as a mm -hmm. machine operator. Mm -hmm. And I retired from that. Now looking back at your experiences on the battleship, how did the battleship experience affect your life? Well, it you learned an awful lot there. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, it's something that just got in your blood, I think. Mm -hmm. If they'd offered me a discharge before the war was over, I'd have refused it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be there until it was all over. Mm -hmm. And I love this old ship. Mm -hmm. I hate to leave it. You love it? I love it. What were your reactions coming back today? You talked to me before <laughs> the interview. Talk to me a little bit about your reaction upon seeing the ship for the first time in since 1945? I'm kind of sentimental, I guess. We walked, <clears throat> walked down here a ways and I saw it. I couldn't take it. So we went back up town, had breakfast. I kind of got myself under control. Mm -hmm. Come down here and I thoroughly enjoyed it after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. It looked so natural. I recall going aboard this all the times I had aboard. I'll always love the old ship. Great. And is there anything else I can tell you? No. We're very happy to have you back here. Thank you very, very much. Well, I, Thank you. I was awfully happy to get back on it. Thank you. Today I've been talking with Mr. Donald Barrier, pharmacist mate, second class, a plank owner of the ship, which means he served aboard the ship from its original commissioning in 1943 until October 1945 when he's discharged. Uh, he currently he came from North Carolina, currently lives in North Carolina. And my name is Dr. Tom Bannon from Kane University, part of the Oral History Project for the Battleship New Jersey. And today's date is April 27th, uh, 2002. Thank you again. You're thank you much again. Thank you. Super job. And Great thank job. Thank you.
did you work for? What did you do then? Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Do you recognize all this? Yes, sir. Let me reach out to the kitchen. There's a kitchen in there at one time? Yeah, I want to make a mm -hmm. And okay, what tell us what you recognize in here? The head's supposed to be right around the corner over here where it used to be. Can you take a walk? Like you were here yesterday, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so this was a head for the patients? That's right. Uh -huh. And uh, how many hours would you work down here? What was your shift? There were four hours on, eight hours on? We had eight hours. Eight hours on. Oh. Except when we, at night when we had to stand up. There was four hour shift then. Mm -hmm. But that was an eight hour shift during the day. And how many patients would you have here at a time? Never too many. Maybe eight or ten is average. Mm -hmm. Come on, Bert. That's a pretty healthy crew. Like I said before, the only problem had was the athlete foot, something like that, against the hot. Mm -hmm. But everything else was pretty good. Did you have any appendicitis? Any appendicitis? Had one or two. Had one little chap. Had appendicitis. Yeah, you told us about that. Mm -hmm. And where would be yours? You would just move throughout the entire sick bay? You would just be stationed in the sick bay and move throughout it helping anybody who needed help? Uh, That's right. Our, our headquarters here mm -hmm. in the sick bay. And then I worked in my uh, We had the operating room, the dressing room, mm -hmm. and the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. And back over there was the isolation ward. Isolation ward? What would that be for? Okay, so that's about it. Something like a communicable disease yeah. or something like that. Sure. 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 And then one that Japanese pilot picked up, we put him over there. Mm -hmm. Was Just he restrained? Did you have to restrain him? Yeah. But it was a guard kept on all the time. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but uh, we had to kind of keep a watch on him. I don't know what he might do or mm -hmm. some crew might take it over to do to him. Do it to him, sure. I had to keep close out. Now you had a medical officer down here too, didn't you? Oh yes, we had several medical officers. Mm -hmm. At that time, I think there was Dr. Ewan, Dr. Roby, Dr. Morris, Dr. William, Willman. He was submarine man had to come over. Mm -hmm. Then we had the dental officers, three dental officers. Mm -hmm. Why don't you walk around a bit more? And take a look. <laughs> right, uh, Donald, tell us, uh, you mentioned that there's some special drink you mixed up for one Christmas. What Christmas was it? And what year and what drink? Uh, 44. It was 44, I guess. 1944. We used the grapefruit juice and alcohol. Rubbing alcohol? No, sir. We had pure grain alcohol. Pure grain? Where'd you get that from? Uh huh. That's all I'm going to tell you on that. Well, you can tell me more. What happened? Well, we run up the photo lab one time, me and the back up here. And we got the reason of that. We got the alcohol made for some drink fruit juice. And the all start getting pretty high. Some of us said, let's double look. This is too weak. Well, I had the watch for them. From two to six, that night, they still up in the water zone. So I saw what was happening, I slipped down. So we started coming back down, my buddy, 
one of the booklets had to watch. She started coming down the ladder, and I went down first. And put she said, oh, my monkey looked up there in the rest of the name of his toes up there. <laughs> Uh huh. She was there. I went back up there and got him and rode him back down. Got him down to bed. And so I went into sick bay and that kind of thing to watch. I never get it. Yeah, we had early in the forest week. You had what now? Early. That was the earliest. Uh huh. He was real nice for me, just a little guy. And he said, Barry, he said, I come by Jimmy's place up there. I can't get him away except that he just prayed up and spewed all the way across the floor. <laughs> I said it's all right, I can handle it by myself. Because I was pretty well looking. Uh-huh. And they said, Are you sure you can handle it? And I said, Yeah, I can handle it. So I sat down at the desk with that chair and I kind of braced myself in. I sat out to watch. <laughs> so I was taking a big chance. So I... Nobody ever caught you. And that was uh, Christmas 1944. 44. And you got the alcohol out of photographic lab. So that's somewhere from the ship. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A little bit of. Anyway, what? I still was talking about there that quick thing. Uh, but it's, his wife was saying, with three things soaked and rum. Mm -hmm. And it was well loaded. We got in there and got to eat and dirt. We got blown out eating that fruit cake. Uh -huh. I hadn't had anything to drink in a long time. Uh -huh. It was good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. There ain't a lot of crazy things that happened back then. Living well. Right. Yes. Anything else you want to tell us about? Any other crazy things that young men did? <laughs> well, one time, I had a little boy on the Morgan, kind of trouble me. Mm -hmm. I was over the water at that time, and every morning I had to mop it down. And I was supposed to stay off of it while I went. This old boy came through there and spit around through the guy that went to Chalette, redhead guy, mm -hmm. and up up, he was in the ball in He just looked at him, and he said, You're not supposed to be in on this old sweat. No guy's got the smart of the buddy, turned around and knocked him down. Mm -hmm. Well, the floor was wet, he started getting up and down again. So he got up that down, he came up by him. He took that old guy, he took him from all the way around the bar pit there. Mm -hmm. I should have stopped him without getting my knees and watched him come through. He got him over against the floor where he turned out the hatch. Well, he broke his nose, he came up pretty good. Uh -huh. I stopped it then, uh -huh. I guess I'm going to. I told him a lesson, he was a pretty good boy after that. And then after he broke his nose, you took care of him in sick bay, right? That's right. That's right. Well, thank you very much for that. That's interesting. Well, thank you. Thanks for the thing. Thank you. Sure. We had to walk all the way around here. We had to clean these things. What did you have around us? We had to clean it all the way around. Oh, oh mop the floor. Yeah, I remember this. Yeah, that's the way we come in, around these things. <coughs> That used to be uh, radio, uh, one of the radio rooms, didn't it? Uh, I, I heard through some of the other uh, crew. Uh, we were trying to find out what the original radio room was. We didn't have there. That was an isolation ward, I guess, back there. Oh, isolation for people who would be uh, have a communicable yeah, disease, disease or something like that. Yeah, or the Japanese prisoner they put them in there on the guard. Go ahead. <laughs> You have to either go down or all the turret. Do you recall where you uh, you slept, where your division, where you were assigned uh, as far as sleeping quarters go? I don't remember where it was. Mm -hmm. 
no more intersections. A lot of that has been changed. You know, they yeah, moved the things around a lot. Yeah. People come back, they can't even recognize where they mm -hmm. slept because it's it's something else now. What was it like when the guns fired? Were you ever down here when the guns fired? And yeah. just, what was it yellow was it like? Yeah. Well, it looks like a good heart thunderstorm. It's like that. I know we had about like that back then. Space when the planes come into the tank. Or maybe an area where you have a. See, you had the 5 inch 38s, 40 millimeters, and a 20 millimeters roll going over. Who should take that? Who should take that? They did, yeah. They probably in this area just didn't even. It sounded like a heart thunderstorm. That was going on. Yeah, that's true, too. Another little crazy tale there. Another Dr. Miller, he was out here in those throat. Doctor was down there one day. I had a big plane attack and all that was going on. Poor little fellow, he was scared to death. That kind of fit. I said, Doctor, this sounds just like Jonas Ridge. That's where I came from on a Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was your feeling when you heard the uh, say five inch guns fired in the, as the airplanes? Well, I I loved it. Down it. You loved it. Yes, Why? Was, uh, well, I knew we were getting yes. some more. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. I know we were doing the giving instead mm -hmm. of receiving mm -hmm. for a change. Mm -hmm. It sounds crazy, but I want to trade a place with the president mm -hmm. as long as that went on. But I still feel the same way. I'd do the same darn thing if I had a chance. Just the way I'm made, I guess. But I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I still see. When well, the thunderstorm effect you were talking about, now that's when these big guns were firing, or you could hear the five inch, or five inch, thirty-eight, and forty millimeters, and eight, and twenty millimeters. Mm -hmm. See, you had about over a hundred guns fired. You got more concentration firepower on this than you had anywhere else in the world. Man, it really sounding off. But when those big ones went off, that's when we shore bombardment or something like that. It feels old ship jerk then. Oh really? The whole ship? Yeah, the whole ship. Did any any people get afraid of that? You seem to have enjoyed it. Was anybody nervous when that fire was going on? I guess some were. I was one of the crazy ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when we, we bombarded there at Saipan for six hours with those big guns, and uh, but when it's over with, I just felt like about a two thirty trunk staggering when it walk. Everything was loose on the ship and jump up and down. But it didn't accomplish a darn thing. When well, the landed there and got a beach ship started, the chaps come in and pushed them right back out into the water. The destroyers had to go right in as far as they could go without drowning to kind of push them back. Mm -hmm. well, they were drowned about 600 of them. <coughs> it's one of those things that happened that you can't look forward to and figure out. You could hear what was going on on deck during the firefighting, uh, the guns on this ship. Could you hear any of the shooting that was coming this way? No, it was too far off. See, when you're below deck here, you don't hear much. Now, if he's up on the top side, you'd hear it. Did you actually see some of the kamikazes coming down on the ship? And oh, it, yes. One time there, when we saw him get the, the York Pound and the Lexington, I believe. I got two of them there. Then, 30 minutes time. But we've got an awful lot of planes. So what's your experience if you see a kamikaze coming down? What goes through your mind? Well, you just stand there and look. There's no use to run. If you're behind the gun, you you see if you can't bring him down. So they set that stick hang of the ship and they didn't pull out of it because it's you or him. But they didn't bother us too much. They always come after the carriers. On the York, uh, Franklin, they hit her. Boy, really buckles the heck up. She's in bad shape. The Admiral ordered the captain there to abandon the ship and let him go. He was kind of stubborn. He didn't want to. He said, if I think I can save the ship if you keep the Japs off of me. Well, for three days and nights, we kept them off. They got the ship out of range. When we went back into Bremerton, Washington, they were sitting in there for repairs. And that was which carrier? Franklin. USS Franklin. Yeah. 
Did you ever man any of the guns aboard the ship? No, they weren't let us do that. Just those kinds of mash needles. Mm -hmm. Some of the guns were all out there. Yeah, that's an important job. <laughs> it was important. Yeah. Did any of the people who manned the guns ever come down? Were they shaky, nervous after battle? Did you ever have anything like that? Any part of the body get injured just moving shells around, crushing a finger or something like that? Very little of that ever happened. Very little. Interesting. Yeah. The one thing I did see, I think, the picture that we had, I can't remember the guy's name, he was a first class mate, was on the Lexington when he went down. It blew his mind. Ever be up on deck, maybe a day like day, for his name. Just a day just like this when the legs went down. And maybe later on be a fire, cloudy or rain, day just like this when the legs went down. He just had done something to his mind. He just couldn't get rid of it. But that's a different story entirely when the ship goes down like that. Did you see the ship going down? Was, no, but it, was it in your area when that no. happened? Yeah. But it's happened when there, but see, most of the time, we're stationed below the deck. So we didn't get to see too much. I call that we saw up there, with about everything was done from below the deck. We didn't see anything much except for those instruments. It was right on the way things turned out. How did they uh, keep you up to date as to what was going on in the battle, keep you posted? How did that work? They would tell us if we were going into the, to a battle, they'd let us know and have everything ready. I remember when well, the chaps kind of pulled one on us there when it was in the Philippines. They sent a, a decoy in, a bunch of ships, and that several of them. And then the other ones come in behind, and Halsey. That's the one mistake I reckon he made. You may have heard that. Yes. Nemesis was talking, Halsey, where are you? But we chased them all night long. Out of 0600 that morning, we was going to make contact. It had been one wonderful battle. Mm -hmm. But MacArthur got scared, some of the ships coming in there, and he got squalling. We had to turn and come back. Pulled in the bay down there. Well, the old battle wagon sitting in there, they took care of the chaps. The water was full of chaps as we come in there, swimming around. We were just plowing through them up the surf. Japanese were swimming through the water? Yeah, bringing some ships. The water was oh, full of chaps. I see, I see. And some of those Filipinos aboard, they hated them. They were throwing everything they could find at them. Mm -hmm. Canned milk, dog ranch. The Filipinos right? aboard in New Jersey were throwing things at them. Yeah, them. really? They were throwing at them. They hated those mm -hmm. chaps. So in New Jersey, was just plowing right through them? Yeah. See, we couldn't stop messing with them. They was out of it. We was after more of them. Mm -hmm. Wanted to put more of them in the water. BJ, call 7595. BJ, 7595. You just it got it in your blood then. You didn't care. We we're going to win or die. So you went at it. Great. There's one more little list that you might be interested in. It's during one of those attacks. One chap come in, he's flying low. He's under where most of the guns get to. He went through that entire task force, which is several miles. Didn't have enough sense to quit when if everything was good, but he got up the outside there, and he's determined he's going to come back with one of our Hellcats is waiting on him there, and he can get back in. That's one thing when it's under our attack there, if our own planes come in, they were enemy, they got shot down. You shot down your own airplane sometimes. If they come in, they get shot down. They had strict orders under our attack to not come in the formation. Mm -hmm. So anything that come in that formation was an enemy. Well, now, if you saw it was just a, one of your buddies who was just astray, would you shoot at him anyway just, just to chase him away? It's too late for that time. Time I recognize him, he's already in the water. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't effective play then. It was a real thing. 
Well, the plants that attacked the New Jersey, were they mostly like Zeros and Kates, or did they have high level, level bombers? Did, you, did they ever come after with the Most of them, what they used was torpedo bombers. That's what they used on the carriers, also the bombs. But those torpedo bombers are the more serious deals there. They could come in low, and it was pretty hard to shoot them down when there's no light yeah, just under your line of fire. When it's up there coming and dropping the bombs, well, they're setting ducks, then you have a pretty good chance of knocking them out. Now, torpedo bombers were slower because they're carrying such a heavy load, so were they easier targets also because they're slow? Did that make them easier, probably? It made them very easy for our fighters. Mm -hmm. They could just fly over top of them and mm -hmm. shoot them down like mm -hmm. ducks in a, mm -hmm. in a pond. Mm -hmm. Now, during a battle, uh, Evie just asked a question. Did they talk to you over the loudspeaker system about what's going on during the battle to keep everybody informed on the ship, or was it just combat for three or four or five hours, whatever it might be? If it was too long, they might tell you how everything was going. Mm -hmm. It was like that one time when the planes were coming in, and I got a little excited. Mm -hmm. I was man of real estate and said, there's a bunch of bogus coming in. Mm -hmm. And a little bit, he come in all excited and said, there's so many bogus, we can't count them. Man battle station's on the double. Well, we did that, and that's when talk about a thunderstorm return loose. Mm -hmm. A bunch of them come in. So it sounded like a thunderstorm? With all those guns going, it was just like a hard thunderstorm. You couldn't hear yourself talk. Mm -hmm. She had all those five inch 38s were on, mm -hmm. those 40 millimeters, no matter, they went boom, boom, mm -hmm. boom, boom, boom. What were the men like after the, the battle would be ended? Were they nervous? Were they relaxed? Were they burned out? What was their... They just like? wanted to relax and rest for a while. Mm -hmm. It's all over now. We'll relax. Mm -hmm. Maybe have a smoke. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get liberty on uh, one of those beautiful desert tropical islands? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got some liberty on Mug Mug. Out there the long end. Nothing on that. Mm -hmm. But they would uh, have to have a beer party over there once in a while just to get off the ship. Mm -hmm. But it was out there twice for eight months so we didn't get off the ship. Mm -hmm. There's one time when we got run out of the grub, out of chow. It got so long the supply ships couldn't get in. So it was for about 30 days there. We just had to spam them. That's about all we had to eat. <laughs> I ate a spam sandwich for morning. I wouldn't even go back to the next morning. Mm -hmm. Do you eat way. any more spam today or no? No, sir. I, if I see you in a store, I'll go around. Did many men lose weight aboard the ship? I've read about that in, in the Pacific. It was so hot. And did they drop Did they drop a lot of weight due to the heat? And That's a strange part of it. They, didn't. they fed them so good, and they didn't have nothing much to do but rest. Mm -hmm. They usually gain weight. Mm -hmm. A few months away. Mm -hmm. Girl in every port? A girl in every port? Hope, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, that part about a sailor, I guess, is pretty well true. One of those liberty parties on the uh, on the islands, were there pretty girls there, or was it just the guys just sort of entertaining yeah, yourself? It's just the guys there. Mug, mug. And when it come in Honolulu, though, it's a little different thing. Everything was lovely for a couple of days. And how long would you be in Honolulu for? Three to four days. Three to four days. Just long enough to take on supplies and maybe, if there's been any damage done, mm -hmm. get that done. Mm -hmm. Usually just a short time. Mm -hmm. Was there much damage done on the ship that had to be repaired? Very little on this ship, we were lucky. We were making a run one Sunday morning. The ship was going down to Wake Island for a little target practice. The Japs decided they wanted to jump target practice too. They shot back those eight inch guns. I was right close to us. She took two hits in the side, big holes in the side of the ship. And shells come through between the stacks on this one, but they missed. We decided we'd practice again some other day. 
<laughs> so the, the shells went right between the stacks and the ship. Yeah, they come through. You could hear them whistling as they come through. And what other ship was hit by those shells? Yeah, we, the uh, USS uh, Iowa. Yeah, our sister ship. Uh -huh. Could you see the shells actually pass through the stacks, or how did you know that those they were? Those big shells, you could see them. If they come back close, you can hear them whistling. Now, did you engage the enemy? Did you fire back at the enemy that day? Oh, or yeah, no? we laid it on pretty good, just mm -hmm. let them know it was around. That I always took a hit. We decided it wasn't worth it. I went down far as I rest them a little, mm -hmm. wake them up. Mm -hmm. Was there, uh, anybody hurt on the Iowa that day that you recall? From I don't think there's any casualties. It's just outside the hole. Mm -hmm. I know the damage was done. 